Thank you. At this time, the Board of Trustees will hear public comments, presentations, or requests on matters listed on the closed session agenda. Speakers are to give their name and addresses. Time limit for speakers is three minutes. The board shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. The board reserves the right to limit presentation. This meeting is being recorded. Do you have anybody that wants to speak to the closed session? Okay. Close that portion. And we'll now go to uh, closed session. Okay.
Yeah, yeah. What's your Can you put it what we're going to look like in the gym? Why can you?
session. We are now reconvened to open session. Uh, there was no action taken in closed session. Uh, I've asked Mrs. Pinedo to give that flag so it's appeal. I'll stand and join her. Ready? Begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's your name, right? Thank you, last name, right? Yeah. Got it? Yeah, my legs are so short. <laughs> short legs. And a tall. Thank you, Maria. Uh, at this time, we will have communications and recognitions. We will start with uh, uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Good evening, board members and those in attendance. First, I would like to applaud our entire district staff that has continued working through this pandemic year. To all the teachers, staff, and students, let me be the first to say welcome back. I would also like to applaud all the student athletes and the coaching staff for implementing safe practices and following appropriate guidelines. Many sports have been underway and the kids seem to be enjoying themselves. Lastly, I watched the entire virtually ever after performance by the Southwest Sabapa Theater. I must say it was very creative. It was very funny. Um, great job. And I look forward to additional performances and that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Um, Maria. Um, good evening, um, fellow board members and community members. Um, so I just want to start off by saying that uh, congratulations to former Desert Oasis student Ivan Soto, who was awarded the Ford Foundation Pre-Doctoral Fellowship from the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. Ivy, Ivan is a doctoral candidate at the University of California Merced. He's a product of our district and a demonstration of the resilience and what our students can achieve. I want to congrat congratulate him as well as his parents. And also congratulations to all the students that have been accepted to colleges and universities. Um, students, as you make a decisions of where you attend college, um, know that you know, these are very important decisions that you'll be making. ICL ICLE will be hosting a virtual college admissions event on 422. Um, April 22nd, and I encourage students to sign up for that. Um, I also want to remind people that starting April 9th, the COVID vaccine is available in our county for individuals 16 years of age and older. Um, and lastly, I'm looking forward to the Central versus Southwest girls soccer game this week, um, scheduled for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Garcia Reese. Hey, um, good evening. I just want to welcome all the teachers back. Welcome the students. Um, everybody, please stay safe. Um, sports are back, and it's really exciting to see all the, the on social media, all the parents, you know, taking far away photos, but they're, they're there. <laughs> um, it was exciting. If anybody has the Southwest Central swim score, I missed it, please. Um, on, the, on a note about the sports, um, I'm so excited about the ball game. <laughs> I'm sitting with Eric <laughs> and um, scholarships, please. Um, there were still a few out there that need to be um, that the deadline is still um, approaching. Contact all the counselor's offices for your scholarships. Um, one came through through me. It is for um, students um, of Heber that have graduated or at one time were Heber students. It is through the El Toro corporation if anybody um i sent it into the counseling offices here at central and at southwest hopefully they can get it up but if anybody just go to el toro tex um, dot com and you can find it there that's it thank you thank you uh, mr hernandez yes um yeah well welcome back teachers and students and pretty much uh, all staff, right? Staff that's been working since the beginning and now teachers back in classroom, students. And uh, it's just been great seeing uh, sports and seeing athletes and seeing uh, community members, you know, just back out on the field, uh, baseball, swim, 
you know, everything, all the participants, just all of that. It's great to see everybody kind of going back to normal. And it, it was really great to see that. And, you know, even me spending time with my brother and family kind of just now able to see, you know, their family members playing a sport. And, you know, all the sports also reminded me about just teamwork. And at the end of the day, even though if it's not a sport, we're kind of the district itself, we're, we're all still one big team. And so it's great that, you know, the team work together. And even though, right, there's some discussions and things that happen that at the end of the day, we're a team, we work together, we work through those discussions. And it's great that that all got worked out and the students are back, you know, on Tuesday. So I'm very happy for that. And I'm very appreciative for everybody that, you know, is a part of the team and, and doing their part in making this district great. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It did my heart so much good today to drive around town and see people walking to school, riding to school in school buses, uh, little kids walking through my neighborhood again. I, I just was so tickled pink. Uh, it did my heart good. And I have a crusty old heart. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to commend the district for having no uh, action on their their audit report that's very good congratulations to the district and arnold and everybody else and i would like to thank and commend all the teachers who are going back to school also good job ladies and gentlemen bus drivers custodians and everybody else who's involved appreciate it a whole lot thank you uh, I think that's all I have to say tonight. Uh, at this time, we'll hear from our student board member, Jiri Soto. Is she on? Good evening, board members, Superintendent Andrews and community members. My name is Yatsi Soto, and I'm your board representative from Central Union High School. Central Studies B is keeping students informed with our social media posts bulletin slides, and ASB website. Last month, our homecoming court was introduced and crowned. Our athletic teams are working hard and girls soccer remains undefeated. It was exciting to see the drum line, tall flags, majorettes, cheer, and drill team be able to perform during halftime at the last game. This week, we're having a bell game spirit week for the 77th annual football game, April 16. It will be live streamed by Valley Sports Network on Instagram and YouTube. We are asking our community to decorate their houses with blue and white flags, yard signs, posters, and more to show their Spartan pride. Friday, we will line Imperial Avenue by 5 p.m. to cheer on the buses as they leave Central. We have started afternoon on-campus learning sessions where students have the op opportunity to go to class from 1.45 to 3.45 p.m for extra help. Sparty's TikTok is up and we will post soon. As part of our leadership class, ASB members must organize and lead projects that address a need on campus or in the community. Current projects include completing our van shoes for the final round, for judging, volunteering to feed the homeless, a campus tour posted on our YouTube, and we have goodie bags encouraging students to stay, stay safe during quarantine. A, hel a hello goodbye assembly is being planned that will be posted on YouTube, including teachers and students. The science department teacher spotlight for March was Mr. Bartman. We do our best to keep school spirit as much as possible because our goal is to involve as many Spartans as we can. Our upcoming events include a senior cap and gown pictures, April 19, class officer elections, April 21st to May, AP test, from May 3rd to 15th. And I'd like to finish by reminding everyone to follow Central Studies B on our social media accounts at CUHS underscore updates on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ariza from Southwest High School. Hi, hello, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, good afternoon. Um, this month or last month, we celebrated St. Patrick's via social media and encouraged students to wear green. Our publicity has made the effort to 
make athletic posters for every sport. We hung those around the school campus to recognize our athletes. The ASB has attended two football games to set up and to decorate. We have our final football game scheduled for this Saturday, April 17th. We have recognized Coach Bird as Coach of the Month, Caleb um, Tejada as our Student of the Month, and Leah Marshall as our Teacher of the Month. The ASB is now accepting applications for our 2021-2022 ASB leadership team. We greeted students who returned to in-person learning today with posters, music, and more. We are excited to see students back on campus. We plan to continue um, these activities the whole week. The class of 2021 has held a socially distanced lunch on the lawn where we invited a maximum capacity of 100 students to come eat, uh, come eat lunch on Eagle Field. Cap and gown pictures are scheduled for April 20th through the 21st, separated by last name. Our hosts are recently competed in the 2021 virtual regional competitive events to test their knowledge of different medical fields different medical areas and the results show that a majority of our students have qualified for the state leadership conference. Our HOSA chapter is also continuing the mental health awareness series which includes various guest speakers introducing our members to the importance of mental health. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Okay, we will now go to Mr. Jude Montanez, Desert Oasis High School. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jude Montanez, and I'm the representative for Desert Oasis High School. Um, today, I wanted to say Desert Oasis is happy to have students in class learning again. The school has two machines. As soon as you enter the campus, that takes your temperature and gives you hand sanitizer. The office and all the other classrooms have dividers for students so they can feel comfortable. Um, Desert Oasis is happy to see all the smiling faces back in class and hope everyone's able to make it. Um, we're also excited for the CA and ASPP testing starting this week. And we're gonna work hard this quarter to finish a successful school year. And that would be all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will now go to Dr. Anderson, superintendent's report. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. I appreciate the opportunity to give a brief update on the progress of the district. And as been stated by our board members, it's been very exciting to see the work that's happened um, since our, our meeting last month and how we've uh, been able to open our classrooms back up again and invite more students back onto campus beyond what we had been doing. So it's really an exciting time. Um, I think what's impressive to me as I listen to our students report is how active our students and our schools have been even in this pandemic. They have found tremendous ways to carry on work and the work of schools and still maintain as best they can a culture of the school, even though they haven't been in person. So I just am really grateful and touched by the effort that our students have put in to, to continue those activities. As I did a quick count, there's only 35 school days left. <laughs> 35 <laughs> school days left. And so, and, and even though I know that we'll, and we'll talk about, and I'll talk about it also today, uh, this evening is, is that we've opened our campuses for in-person learning. There was a nice story in the newspaper um, uh, last, before the spring break about our efforts. Um, we still have distance learning happening every day in the morning that we've done all year long. And now there's additional opportunities in the afternoons for students to come in for additional services. And I was able to visit about 15 classrooms today. I'll report on that in just a minute. Again, athletics are doing great. Um, we've only had one incident where we had a, a positive COVID case. We took immediate quick action um, on that to keep everyone safe, did all the appropriate notification. And the result was is that the work that was done by the individual and that what was needed there um, resulted in no additional spread. And that the staff member who was affected was actually following all the appropriate protocols of mask wearing and distancing. So there wasn't spread. So even though that individual had a case and they're recovering, um, there was minimal impact on the health of other students. It did result in suspending one team's work for about a week, but they're back preparing for their final game. So, and it didn't affect any other teams. So I guess the point is that the precautions that we put in place and the quick action that we took was effective. 
We don't ever want to have to do this, but knowing that we can do it is a great reminder of our preparation and readiness in the event we have to take action in one of these matters related to COVID. Um, as you know, we're officially in the orange tier. Uh, we hope that stays that way. Um, it has opened up our classrooms and facilities for more opportunities and activities that are occurring on as the, as the restrictions get a little bit, little bit looser. Even as recently as today, I was talking to some performing arts instructors and they are working on plans to have some in-person performances with very limited seating, of course, for probably just family members. But we're working through those details because we want our students to have those opportunities this school year. So those are some great positive things that we're appreciative for the new opportunities that come our way as the conditions improve. Since our last board meeting, we're able to finalize our in-person learning plan, and which is what we call our phase three of the roadmap to recovery, our version of that um, with our language, that it include uh, updating our, our agreement with our teachers association. The new schedule is posted on our websites. Uh, it's on all the websites. It's available there in multiple, um, in English and in Spanish. It's available so people can see that. Um, it does allow students equal access to all of their subject areas. So all of the subject areas that students have are covered by their teachers or other teachers, because not every one of our teachers are able to return. So we created a system that allows every student to receive the services they need and still have their daily schedule in the morning and in-person services by staff in the afternoon. So even in visiting classrooms today, I saw, and today was listed on the schedule as an electives day, but we had math happening and we had science happening and we had other classes happening where students came in for support. So there's lots of communication happening with students and teachers where they're getting help that are needed. And there's a lot of uh, great energy from both our teachers about the desire to help our students get caught up and to accelerate learning from the little gaps that have occurred along the way. So we're excited about that. Today, just, uh, and just last, lastly note, these are sessions from 145 to 345. Tuesday through Friday and transportation is provided. Uh, our drinking fountains are turned off, my understanding, but we've given every student their own water bottle. And so they're a purple and blue and all the school colors with a logo because our, our touch, our fillable water stations are working. Um, today, we had a total of 271 students on the first day come back to school in our schools. That's about 15% of our total student population. Central had 107 students uh, check in today. Uh, Desert and Phoenix Rising had a total of 13 students check in today, and Southwest had 151 students attend today. So it's a total of about 270, and we hope that number goes up a little bit. We don't want to fill our classrooms necessarily, but we do encourage our students that want the help and are ready to come in for that in-person learning opportunities to come in in the afternoons and uh, to see their teachers. It's a great chance to, as we frame it, as we describe it, we want our students to build relationships with their teachers because that trusting relationship helps us deal with stress and knowing who these people are. We want our students to be reconnected to schools. And in some cases, our freshmen have never been on campus and don't know where anything is yet. So we want them to come in and experience that. And, 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 and lastly, we wanna accelerate learning and, and fill in those gaps there that there may be. But um, this is a great first step as we uh, return to regular learning that we hope happens uh, in the fall. So that concludes my report. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Dr. Andrews. We will now go to student of the month recognition. We will start with the newest grandpa. Congratulations, Mr. Phillips. Oh my gosh, here. thank you, Emma. Yeah, thank you, Emma. It, it's, it's quite a blessing and um, definitely joyous. Thank you so much. And, and we're hearing a lot of folks talking about sports going on. And I gotta tell you, if the, if the board meeting moves along rapidly, you could catch the game right outside the East doors as Central and, and the Eagles are tangling it up out on the baseball field, out on Mickey Carter Field. And so thank you for the opportunity to recognize our students. I'm gonna start with our freshman recipient. Uh, her name is Elizabeth Hernandez. And Elizabeth is in HOSA, in Academic Decathlon, Orchestra. She's vice president of the class of 2024. She is on the cross country team the track team, and she also is participating in karate. She is also a member of the Happiness Advantage Book Club. Her future plans are to become a part of the ASB and varsity cheer, as well as other clubs in school. She wishes to obtain her black belt in karate 
and she wants to make a difference in school, get scholarships, get a good education and support herself so that she can tend to her parents in the future. So congratulations, Elizabeth, on being student of the month at Southwest High School. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Keep up the great work. All right, our next student of the month, our sophomore is Riley Brown. Riley is currently in Savapa Theater. Last year, she was in the DGS Club and the Key Club. Some of her hobbies include painting, makeup, and crafting. She plans on becoming involved in ASB and taking AP and IB courses beginning next year. She wants to become a Bruin at UCLA and major in theater. So Riley, we're proud of you. Congratulations on being student of the month. Congratulations, Riley. Keep up the great work, Riley. I didn't see Sadie, I hope Sadie's here. Sadie Lenhart is our junior and she's been a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, uh, Future Farmers of America, Varsity Cheer, Cheer excuse me, Savapa Dance, she's, where she's the co-captain. Uh, her hobbies include running, tumbling, and hanging out with family and friends. Uh, her goals include to attend a four-year university and major in engineering or business, and hopefully continue cheering at the collegiate level. So congratulations to Sadie. If she's not here, I hope her family had a chance to check in on YouTube. And our senior is Alexa Guerrero. Her clubs and activities include Savapa Dance, where she is captain. She's a member of Varsity Cheer. And she has already decided that she will be attending UC Irvine this fall. And so we will have a future ant eater majoring in sociology. And so Alexa, keep up the great work and congratulations on being student of the month. Ms. Jones, thank you so much. Um, it's great to honor our fine students and congratulations once again to all of our recipients. Alexa, keep up the great work. Thank you. Uh, we will now go to, I understand that Ms. Mrs. Petter's on the night for Central High School. Yes, she is. Yeah. I am, but if you look at the name there, it still says Craig Lyon. Well, I know he's the principal. He's but... never looked better. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I uh, feel very privileged to stand in for Mr. Lyon tonight to recognize some of our very outstanding students. Um, and so we'll start with uh, Liseth Farias Vargas, who is a senior. Uh, Liseth played basketball and golf, and she was the treasurer of the Positivity Club. And she is currently the manager for the swim team, and she volunteers to help with the Humane Society of Imperial County. Her future plans are to join the military and once she gets out to become an interpreter. And uh, her fine arts teacher is the one who recommended her. Uh, and they had to say, Liseth is such a breath of fresh air and such a joy to see every day. She always has her camera on and has a big smile for me. She's a hard worker and does superior work. Her assignments are always on time and she always follows instructions. She's an outstanding student and uh, let's see, whoop, an outstanding student, a model student. And her teacher wants to thank her for her smiling face each morning because she has made online teaching more personal. That's nice. uh, next, also uh, nominated by the Fine Arts Department is uh, 11th grader Priscilla Munoz. Uh, Priscilla is 16 years old. Uh, she has participated in the green, club, the green Team, the Science Fair, Positivity, and Dungeons and Dragons Club. She's played JV and Varsity Girls Soccer, and she is currently the ASB, oh, for next year, it looks like. She's the ASB Attorney General for 21-22. Uh, her hobbies include drawing pencil portraits, digital art, playing the piano, playing the guitar, and music production, so very creative. And her future plans are to attend UC Davis, study abroad, and become an exotic veterinarian. She also wishes to work at a vet in South Africa uh, or some other third world country. 
And Dr. Tacky uh, says that her projects in electronic music have all been good, but have really come into their own this semester. She produces pieces that are authentic and quite moving. And he encourages us to check out her work on the upcoming 1971 tribute album that is soon to be released. So good job, Priscilla. Thank you. I look forward to uh, the, uh, the release of the album. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, in, the, in the math department, our first nominee is Brianna Barrett, who is a senior. She has participated in the varsity girls basketball team, varsity volleyball. She's been a link crew leader. She's a member of the Green Team Recycling Club, the Advanced Guitar Club. She's participated in science fair and outside of school. Uh, she also participates in ballet and tap. She's also a volunteer for the Brawley Elks Lodge and she says that she loves helping her community. Her future plans are to attend a university. She's still deciding between UC Berkeley, UC Davis, UC Santa Cruz and Stonehill College. And she's interested in majoring in environmental engineering because she's always wanted to help our planet Earth. She wants to graduate with a bachelor's of science degree and hopefully continue to earn a master's. Uh, Mr. Myers, who is her math teacher says, Brianna is doing very well in his AP class. She's very dedicated and she's an independent student. Her attendance is awesome as well as her, her presence in my online class. She remains positive and is a very responsible young lady and always very actively is engaged in class. So congratulations, Brianna. Thank you. And we've made this a family affair because her sister has been nominated as well. So Amy Barrett was also nominated by the math department. She's a 10th grader. Uh, she's a part of the green team club. She plays volleyball, basketball. She's part of our biomedical pathway, which is something we're really excited about. Uh, she does lots of community service in certain events outside of school, and she also participates in ballet and tap dancing. Her future plans are to attend a great college, complete her studies, and devote her life to a medical career and her family. And Mrs. Ortiz, who nominated her, says, as a teacher, I have to recognize Amy to be an extraordinary young lady and student. I've seen many examples of her talent and her outstanding academic work. She has always displayed responsibility, dedication, and ability to work independently. In addition, she has been actively engaged in our distance learning virtual class. Mrs. Ortiz says she really appreciates her dedication and hard work. Congratulations, Amy. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. And finally, we have one last one. Uh, ninth grader Katiana Ahumada has also been nominated by the math department. Uh, she is a JV cheerleader and she is going to continue to strive to reach her academic goals to one day be accepted to a university. Uh, Mr. Anderson, who nominated her, says Katiana is a superstar in his seventh period class. She's a hard worker in and out of the classroom. And he says he looks forward to her sending humorous messages about the homework and how she figured out a really tough problem. Katiana's energy is infectious and her classmates admire her ability to see the positives in all things. I, he, Mr. Anderson says he appreciates your contributions to class and he says Central needs more students like you, Katiana. So good job, way to go. Actually, Mr. Anderson says good work, fam. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations to all of our Central students. We are so proud to have you on campus. And like uh, has already been mentioned by many others, it was a wonderful day to get students back on our campus today. Thank you, Mrs. Petter. Uh, Mr. Ocampo? Mr. Ocampo is excused tonight. Okay. He has had a family matter that came up in the middle of the day. So okay. another representative is going to be presenting their students. So I'm not sure who that is. I didn't get the word of who the representative was. I be. think I see her. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I am Norma Lara. I am representing Mr. Ocampo today. And it's uh, my honor to announce our student of the month for both Desert Oasis and Phoenix Rising High Schools. Um, 
We're gonna begin with uh, our Desert Oasis Student of the Month, Efrain Mesa Barba. I believe he's not present today, but uh, he is an 11th grader. Uh, he was nominated because of his academic uh, success since he arrived to Desert Oasis High School. He's been maintaining A's and B grades. Uh, his attendance is excellent. Uh, his sh uh, short-term goals are to try to graduate this school year. Um, uh, and he was recommended for uh, this uh, presentation by his teachers. Efrain was selected for student of the month due to his dedication to improving his grades and attendance. So even though he's not here, congratulations, Efrain. You have done a wonderful job so far. Um, for Phoenix Rising, I believe that he is here. I saw his name, Jacob Williams is our uh, student of the month. Jacob is a ninth grader. Uh, academically, he has been averaging B grades since his arrival to Phoenix Rising High School. Uh, he is, uh, he has good attendance uh, and his short-term goal is also is to return to Southwest High School as a junior next year. Uh, he was recommended by his teachers because he, because of the improvement in his grades and the attendance, uh, his attendance and the potential to improve academically. So um, on behalf of Mr. Ocampo and all the staff at Desert Oasis and Phoenix Rising Schools, uh, congratulations to the two students of the month. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. We now go to public comment session. At this time, the Board of Trustees will hear comments, presentations, or requests on matters listed on this agenda or other topics that are not on the agenda but are within the Board's jurisdiction. Speakers are to give their names and addresses. Time limit for speakers is three minutes each. The Board shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. The Board reserves the right to different presentations. This meeting is being recorded. I understand we have two people that want to present tonight or talk tonight. Are they on? Coming, yep. Do we have uh, Patricia Orozco? No. No? They're... Okay, then oh, we'll it's... go to the next. Yeah, it's uh, reversed. Pardon? It's a, a, a citizen. I don't know okay. the name of the person. Private citizen, you're on. Yes, um, I'd like to find out when in-person school uh, is going to return to Central. So specifically pre-COVID in-person, normal classes that occurred pre-COVID, when is that going to return? Can you address the question? Yes, please, will you address that? Sure, so I'll do my best to address that question. Um, we are hopeful based on the information we're receiving from the state of California and our local health department uh, that we are likely to return to regular in-person classes in August. Uh, that's our best estimate at this point in time. Uh, it's still a little bit uncertain in the future, but I would lean that direction based on what we've been able to discover so far. Um, why, as have other schools, why have other schools and other districts in Southern California and San Diego County why have they been able to start in-person classes? Why are private schools having in-person classes since August of last year and September of last year? So you asked the question of when do we feel we'll be able to start? And so that's our best estimate based on local conditions here in the Valley with our, um, our local results, our local associations with our labor our ag agreements. Um, and also the conditions within the community. 
And so that's our best estimate at this point in time. I really can't speak to other counties or other districts and why they have chosen to proceed the way they have. So we're moving um, forward in a cautious manner for our students, providing as much opportunity as we can at this point in time, given our local conditions. So I believe the the, the uh, according to our technician, the, the citizen has left. The... Okay. Looks like that's it for that item. Uh, we now will approve the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Oh, did we just real quick, oh, do we have the other comment? No, okay, that's it. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve okay. the agenda as it's presented. Uh, board member Ruiz Garcia, Made the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, Mrs. Pinedo made the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain, none. Student preferred vote. Do I hear yeas? Nays? Yay. Yay. I think I heard three. Mm -hmm. I heard three. Okay, the agenda is approved. We will now cover consent agenda items. All items appearing on consent agenda are routine business matters will be acted upon by one motion without discussion. Should any board member request that an item be considered separately, that item will be added to the end of the regular agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? All motion to approve the okay, consent Mr. agenda. Okay, Mr. Hernandez. Is there a second? I second. Okay, Mr. Reese. I'm sorry, Mr. Rodriguez. I've done that to you before. It starts with an R. I got the right <laughs> alphabet. <laughs> no problem. Uh, do I hear A's? Aye. 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 Is there any no's? Okay. Uh, student preferred vote? Yes. Aye. Aye. Any no's? Okay, the, that item has uh, approved. Okay, we will now go to action information items. Uh, approval of the personnel report. Do I have a motion? All motion to approve the personnel report. Okay. Mr. Hernandez, do I have a second? I'll go ahead and uh, second. Okay, so moved and seconded. All those in favor say yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Opposed? Hearing no opposition, the action information items have been approved. We will now go to the adoption of board resolution number uh, 041321-18 for Craig proclaiming May 12th, 2021 as California Day of the Teacher. I'd like someone to volunteer to read that uh, out loud. Uh, Mrs. Pinedo. Yes, I'll read that, thank you. Um, as, uh, Central Union High School District Board of Trustees Resolution Number 041321-18 proclaiming May 12th, 2021 as California Day of the Teacher. Whereas California Education Code 37222 sets aside the second Wednesday in May as the California Day of the Teacher throughout the state of California and encourages suitable commemorative exercises during attention, directed attention to teachers and the teacher profession, whereas the Central Union High School District Board of Trustees has the utmost respect and admiration for the state's professional teachers who have dedicated their lives and their talents to the education of our children, who are truly California's most precious and important resource, whereas the Board of Trustees recognizes the, tr the truly vital role of teachers in realizing its vision for California public education. All California students of the 21st century will attain a higher level of academic knowledge, applied learning, and performance skills to ensure fulfilling personal lives and careers and contribute to civic and economic progress in our diverse and changing democratic society. Whereas in contemplating the California Day of the Teacher, the Central Union High School Board of Trustees recognizes and honors the contributions of all teachers. Whereas during this unprecedented time of school closures due to COVID-19, the teachers of Central Union High School District have shown their 
commitment to the academic and social emotional well being of students through the implementation of the CUHSD distance learning program along with their individual efforts to connect with students and families. Now, therefore, be it resolved on this 13th day of April, 2021, that the Central Union High School Board of Trustees proclaims May 12, 2021 as California Day of the Teacher, extending its sincere appreciation to the many professional teachers in the Central Union High School District who make our public schools successful and urges all local educational agencies to schedule appropriate activities, celebrating and emphasizing the contributions of teachers who really do affect eternity. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there a motion? I make a motion to accept uh, May 12, 2021 as the California Day of the Teacher. Re resolution number 041321-18. Is there a second? I second. That's a resolution, so it's a roll call vote. Trustee Hernandez. Uh, aye. Trustee Peinado. Aye. Trustee Rodriguez. Aye. Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee Garcia Reese. Aye. School board member Soto. Aye. School board member Araiza. Aye. School board member Montañez. He may have left. Okay, that resolution has been adopted. Congratulations uh, to all, all our teachers today, the day of the teacher. We will now look at adopting resolution number 041321-19, proclaiming the week of May 16th through 22nd as classified school employees week. Do I have a volunteer to read that, Mr. Hernandez? Central Union High School District Board of Trustees Resolution Number 0401321-19, proclaiming the week of May 16th through May 22nd, 2021, as Classified School Employees Week. Queries: Classified school employees provide valuable services to the schools and students of the Central Union High School District. And queries: Classified school employees contribute to the establishment and promotion of a positive instructional environment. And queries: Classified school employees play a vital role in providing for the welfare and safety of students of the Central Union High School District and where is classified school employees employed by the Central Union High School District strive for excellence in all areas relative to the educational community. Where is during this unprecedented time of school closures due to COVID-19, classified school employees have gone above and beyond to ensure that the needs of our students and families have been met through their work at the Central Union Unified School District sites and or through working remotely. Therefore, be it resolved that the Central Union High School District Board of Trustees hereby recognizes and wishes to honor the contributions of the classified school employees to quality education in the state of California and in the Central Union High School District and declares the week of May 16th through May 22nd, 2021 as Classified School Employees Week and encourages all local education agencies to schedule appropriate activities celebrating and emphasizing the contributions of classified employees. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Do I have a motion to approve that resolution? All motion to approve the resolution. Hey, Mr. Hernandez. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Trustee Hernandez. Aye. Trustee Peinado. Aye. Trustee Rodriguez. Aye. Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee Garcia Reese. Aye. School board member Soto. Aye. School board member Araiza. Aye. School board member Montañez. Aye. He's back. He's back. That motion has passed. That resolution has passed. Proclaiming uh, week May 16th as classified school employees week. <clears throat> Did I miss one? Nope, you're going right We're in order. Uh, we want to have look to adopt resolution 041321-20 declaring May 5th, 2021 as school principals day. Do I have a volunteer to read that one? I'll, I'll, I'll read it. Okay, Mr. Okay. Hernandez, go for it. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> Board of Trustees Resolution Number 041321-20, declaring May 5th, 2021, as School Principals Day. Whereas the Central Union High School District has declared May 5th, 2021, as School Principals Day. In coordination with the efforts of the National Association of Elementary School Principals, the American Federation of School Administrators, and the National Association of Secondary School Principals, working with the U.S. Congress to designate National Principals Month and resolutions thereof. Whereas the vision, dedication, and determination of a principal provides the mobilizing force behind any school reform effort. Whereas principals are expected to be educational visionaries, instructional leaders, assessment experts, disciplinarians, community builders, public relations experts, budget, anal budget analysts, facility managers, special programs administrators, and guardians of various legal, contractual, and policy mandates and initiatives, as well as being entrusted with the education and development of young people, the most valuable resource. Whereas principals set the academic tone for their schools and work collaboratively with teachers to develop and maintain high curriculum standards, develop mission statements, and set performance goals and objectives for schools to achieve educational excellence. Whereas the Central Union High School District honors such exemplary secondary level public, private, and independent school leaders committed to serving students from ninth through 12th grade in their profession. Whereas the Central Union High School District recognizes outstanding high, high level, outstanding high school level principals who have succeeded in providing high quality learning opportunities for students, as well as their exemplary contributions to the profession. Whereas to honor and recognize the contribution of all school principals and assistant principals at all grade levels to the success of students in California elementary and secondary schools, and to encourage residents of the County of Imperial to observe Principals Day with appropriate ceremonies and, act and activities that promote awareness of school leadership's role in ensuring that every child has access to a high quality education. Whereas during this unprecedented time of school closure due to COVID-19, the school principals of the Central Union High School District have demonstrated their leadership skills and commitment to the academic and social emotional well-being of all stakeholders. Be it resolved in honor of the service of all elementary, middle level and high school principals and to recognize the importance of their school leadership so that every child has access to a high quality education and to celebrate school leader accomplishments. The day of May 5th, 2021 is hereby designated to be School Principals Day. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Do I have a motion to approve that resolution? I motion to approve the resolution. Okay. Is there a second? All second. Okay, Mr. Hernandez. Resolution, roll call. <coughs> Trustee Hernandez. Aye. Trustee Peinado. Aye. Trustee Rodriguez. Aye. Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee Garcia Reese. Aye. School Board Member Soto. Aye. School Board Member Araiza. Aye. Aye. School Board Member Montañez. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have one more resolution. Two more. Uh, <clears throat> Resolution number 41320-23, declaring May 12, 2021 as National School Nurses Day. Do I have a reader for that one? Oh, Eric. Maria? Eric? Eric. Mr. Rodriguez will read that one. Thank you. Central Union High School District Board of I'll Trustees resolution number 041321-23 in support of National School Nurse Day. One more. Worries okay. children are the future, and by investing in them today, we are ensuring our world for tomorrow. And worries yeah. all the families deserve to feel confident that their children will be cared for when they are at school. Worries all students have the right to have their physical and mental health needs safely met while in school, excuse me, while in the school setting. And worries students today face more complex and life threatening health problems requiring care in school. And whereas credentialed school nurses address the home and community factors that impact the student's health. And whereas credentialed school nurses have served a critical role in improving public health and ensuring students' academic success for more than 100 years, along with serving as advocates for the 21st century student's health. And whereas during the times of community health crisis, the role of credentialed school nurses have emphasized the necessary relationships between the nurses and public health that ensure student health and academic success and where his credentials student um, excuse me school nurses act as liaisons 
to the school community, families, and healthcare providers, along with agencies, on behalf of the children, excuse me, the children's health by promoting wellness and improving health outcomes for the nation's children. And where is credential school nurses and members of the school based and district based teams that address the school population and where is credential school nurses understand the link between health and learning and are in a position to make a positive difference for every children every day and where is the credential school nurses are in a specialized practice of professional nursing that advance and promote the well being academic success, health, and lifelong achievements of all students by serving on front lines and providing critical safety net for our nation's most fragile children. And now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Central Unified School District hereby recognizes May 12th, 2021 as National School Nurse Day. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve that resolution? I motion. Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Pinedo. Roll call vote. Trustee Hernandez? Aye. Trustee Peinado? Aye. Trustee Rodriguez? Aye. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Garcia Reese? Aye. School board member Soto? Aye. School board member Arraiza? Aye. School board member Montañez? Aye. Thank you. It's now requested the board to adopt resolution 041321-22 authorizing the recognition of employees under education code section 44015 for 2021 fiscal year. May I speak to this just briefly? And then oh, if yes. you'd like to read that. Um, uh, in years past, we would gather together for a luncheon to celebrate all these employees. Uh, but because of the ongoing conditions of the pandemic, we still don't think we should gather in a big group and have lunch together. So this would provide um, a gift certificate from a local restaurant so they can still get a meal on behalf of the school district and recognize them for the good work. We plan on doing um, a drive through pickup for those that want to come by and pick up their gift certificate along with another popsicle, because it's going to be May and it's going to be hot. Uh, so we'll have uh, our own, uh, I may say this wrong, paleteria, yeah. <laughs> uh, <That's right>. <laughs> a drive through to pick that up. So this res resolution will address that. Okay, Mrs. Garcia Reese is going to be the resolution. Resolution authorizing the recognition of employees under education code section 44015 for the 2021 fiscal year. Whereas on March 4th, 2020, the governor proclaimed as a state of emergency to exist in the state of California as a result of the threat of COVID-19. And whereas the Central Union High School District for the safety and well-being of its staff and students initiated school closures on March 17, 2020 in order to address COVID-19. And whereas such school closures were initiated based on guidance and recommendations by the California Department of Education, the California Health and Human Services Agency and Imperial County Public Health Department. And whereas the Central Union High School District in addressing safety concerns and complying with ongoing social distancing will limit personal contact between our staff members through the end of 2021 school year. And whereas the Board of Trustees annually acknowledges and recognizes its staff member service with an appreciation luncheon and Whereas due to COVID-19 guidelines, the Central Union High School is unable to provide the annual luncheon for its staff. And whereas it is the desire of the Board of Trustees that in lieu of providing an employee appreciation luncheon, that a gift certificate for a meal from a locally owned and operated restaurant will be provided in recognition of their service. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Centurion High School District is taking action to waive the requirements under board policies 4156.2 and 4256.2 and 4356.2 and authorizes the recognition of staff members by providing a meal gift certificate under Education Code Section 44015 for the 2021 fiscal year. Thank you. Can can I just say one thing sure. that last year and I assume this year, 
the gift certificates will be for locally owned, you know, mom and pop, eat local, try, try type businesses. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that last year that was a very nice touch. And this year again, uh, some will, will have to be, you know, franchise restaurants, but most of it, if not 80 to 90% will be locally owned restaurants, Good. which I thought was very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the res resolution? My motion. Okay. Is there a second? All second. Okay. Roll call vote. Trustee Hernandez. Aye. Trustee Peinado. Aye. Trustee Rodriguez. Aye. Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee Garcia Reese. Aye. School board member Soto. Aye. School board member Araiza. Aye. School board member Montañez. Aye. That sounds unanimous to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will now have public disclosure of on the initial contract proposal from the CUSD Board of Trustees to the El Central Edu Secondary Teachers Association, known as EXTA, for contract negotiations for the 2020-2021 school year. So that uh, disclosure is in the packet and we've disclosed which two areas, uh, two chapters that we'd like to negotiate with the association. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will now go to item eight, approval of the Central Union High School District Board of Trustees initial contract proposal. I just did that one. So one is the disclosure and now oh, the board the, approves the, board. the disclosure. I got it. Uh, is there a motion? I'll move. Is there a second? Uh, what a motion. Who wants to move? Go ahead. People can move and I'll second. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Sorry. Aye. There's no preferential vote for students on that one. No. No, we will no. now go to <clears throat> resolution 041321-21, authorizing the establishment of a new comprehensive high school within the Central Union High School District in the form of a virtual independent study. Alter alter alternate school of choice known herein as the Central Union Virtual Academy. So Madam President, um Unlike the other items that are about staff appreciation, we don't necessarily need to read this uh, resolution. Of course, if someone could, if that's the desire of the board. I just want to comment uh, about this next step. The authorizing of this, as we've spoken in months past, will provide another layer of services to our students in the community. Um, and it's not just because of the COVID pandemic and the need to stay at home, but we recognize there's other students with different types of needs that also may want for now or permanently need some type of distance learning uh, way of instruction. Um, the other comment too, is we already have done some initial survey of families and we already recognize upwards of a 65 to hundred families expressing interest in this program. And once we proceed with this resolution, this would allow the district to move forward with the development of the school, including contacting those families um, about registration and all those different activities that we need to do, excuse me, need to do. Recognizing too that the, the name is a temporary name. I don't think we wanna stay with the Central Union Virtual Academy uh, that may confuse it with the Central Union High School. Therefore, we'll you know, do some work with those families to develop suggested names and go through a formal naming process of the school. And there's much work to do in terms of uh, registering with the state, developing that process and getting all of that done Eventually, the school will have its own web page. Um, staff will need to be identified um, and additional staff hired because we know we have different types of needs of students there. So we, we feel like we have a lot of work to do in the coming months. And so we're eager to get started. Uh, okay. Since we had a nice presentation last month, I think we can suspend the uh, reading of the resolution. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to approve that? I would like to motion to approve. I'll There's, second. Okay.
Roll call vote. Hernandez. Aye. Trustee Peinado. Aye. Trustee Rodriguez. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Garcia Reese. Aye. School board member Soto. Aye. School board member Araiza. Aye. School board member Montañez. Aye. That resolution passed. Item number 10, request the Board of Trustees to approve resolution 041321-17, ongoing major maintenance plan and the 2021-22 facility, the 2021-22 facility improvement projects, capital renewal schedule, ongoing major maintenance plan for the Century Union High School District. So, Madam President, I'd like to uh, present a few slides on this one. Okay. Again, this is a this is one about this is an annual thing we do every year when we present what are our major improvement plans. Um, in this resolution, you, the the board is not being asked to approve contracts or a final list of exactly what we will work on. It is simply a priority list. And so, uh, typically, uh, Assistant Superintendent Preciado would be presenting this, and he developed these materials for us. The board has a set of slides that I'll cover. Um, uh, for the, the, the folks who are watching in the audience. Um, but this uh, agenda item is just giving us a set of priorities where we can work um, on some major maintenance projects. And maintenance is, as you know, is essential so that we don't have crises <laughs> um, and where we have to, where those, those repairs can be more costly. So um, our technical staff, they're gonna switch me over so we can see the slides. You of course have the slides to follow along. So again, this presentation was prepared by uh, Assistant Superintendent Preciado, who's not available to be with us tonight. So through the California Education Code, there is the ability for us to do this plan. Oftentimes this is called deferred maintenance and there are available funds that come through the state. Sometimes we need to dedicate our own funds to add to those deferred maintenance funds, depending on the funding cycles and schedules that come forward. Uh, but this also, the resolution is part of compliance that the board is taking action to identify areas of need. So that's part of what's happening here in the Ed Code. So the document in the resolution, the attachments in the package, they do contain a listing of relative capital needs improvements, primarily roofing, painting, plumbing, electrical work, HVAC projects are particularly the ones that are usually the highest of need. As you know, we, we can't afford to have our HVAC units go out. So we do a regular routine maintenance and, so, and oftentimes upgrading and replacing those things. The same with the roofs. When we do get rain, we get a lot of rain. And, uh, and the heat that we have experienced the valley, as you know, is hard on roofs. And so every year we actually do come across a leak. And so we've identified a few more from this last year that we need to work on. Uh, this is all an effort done so that our facilities meet, of course, the Williams Act requirements, but also typically just so they're safe, good, comfortable spaces for us to be in, um, that our facilities aren't deteriorated, um, that they're a good example of uh, the, the stewardship that the board has for our community to maintain our facilities. So there's a process we go through. It's kind of an ongoing process, but there are meetings that are held with our facility and maintenance supervisor, our site administrators, also our architect and the assistant superintendent. They do um, discussions. They walk through the facilities and take a look. We put eyes on these requests of things that are needed. Um, along with these folks that are involved in this. And of course, we consult with the maintenance department staff on what the district needs are. Since they're the ones who are constantly working and repairing, we know which ones, um, which items we need to work on. For example, last year, we had an air conditioning unit that we thought we could hold on for one more year and it failed mid-year. So we had to go back and quickly repair a, a, an air conditioning unit. Those things happen, but we listen in to our maintenance staff because they're the ones working on this equipment on a regular basis. So what you see here on this slide, it's, it's um, the fourth slide in your packet. These were the projects that were worked on in the 2019-2020 school year. Um, we did work at Central Union High School. Uh, we always have to take care of the bleacher repair and inspection for our bleachers, but there's other projects such as um, re-roofing buildings or the parking lots. And of course you can see the STEM building in there. Um, we worked on other projects at Southwest, such as the baseball fencing. Um, we worked on some signage for the, the theater outside. 
of course, bleacher repair and uh, Desert Oasis needed restroom improvements and other campus improvements. So in, the, in that school year, we spent around $2.5 uh, $2 million on facility improvement in the 1920 school year. Moving forward to the current school year, and much of this work is done during the summer, uh, summer months, but it does carry forward. Again, at Central, we, um, as you can see through the CTIG, we, we completed the construction program for the CTE incentive grant in the construction classroom with a different fund, but other areas such as re uh, pool repair, uh, roofing that was done, again, multiple air conditioning units, and we always have to have the bleachers inspected, any repair that was needed. Southwest had additional items there as well as roofing and uh, modernization of, uh, of equipment, um, primarily our library. Uh, by the way, the library furniture has arrived and the library for the library is completed. Good. <laughs> uh, I, when I arrived here uh, just over two or just under two years ago, we were in mid work, like the library was torn apart. Um, just this last week during spring break, the final pieces of furniture were installed. Um, at some point in time, I encourage you to walk through. I'll uh, forward some photos on to the board so they can see those as well. But uh, students who are in there see the difference and the staff also recognize it's a delightful place to, to stop in and visit. <clears throat> Moving forward, what, the, what this resolution entails is that we work in these areas. <clears throat> um, Central Union High School uh, still has need for some roofing that needs to be done. And of course, HVAC units. We're also looking at possible shade structures as there is an increased demand or request for students to be outside, not always inside the cafeteria. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's a need to have some additional roofing or possible shade units. Same at Southwest High School is replacing of HVAC units. We've also discovered that our tennis courts need resurfacing most likely. Um, again, shade structures and of course bleacher repair. Uh, Desert Oasis has some similar needs for improvements as well. So we are, we are currently budgeting just over the $2 million mark for uh, facility improvements in the deferred maintenance area. So um, with that, those are what we're recommending. It's kind of in line with traditional, what we've done. Uh, it's not out of the ordinary to have about a $2 million maintenance project. So this resolution would just give us the priorities so we can then go to work on getting contracts lined up and estimates and work within that budget. Do we have a... a meeting plan with parents on the aquatic center to get their input on it? So we do not have a meeting scheduled as of yet on the calendar. We anticipate that doing, doing that um, in early fall, probably August or September. Okay. Because I know we had one planned last year, but we had to cancel it due to COVID. COVID. Yeah, April 21st, 2020. <laughs> I remember that day. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we postponed it. Um, and then, of course, the uncertainty of the finances when the pandemic was also hit us. And, and now we feel in a position we can proceed with the planning process because it's, it's a multi, as we know, multi-year process to do this. Also, we're not just wanting to build a, a swimming pool, but it's an aquatic center. It's with restrooms, et cetera, dressing rooms. Right, restrooms, uh, bleachers, lighting, sound system, scoreboard. Uh, and, and we don't want to shortchange the community. So it will, we anticipate this being a rather expensive project. Um, and we want to get the community's input on that. So we do anticipate doing that in the early fall. Okay, thank you. Do I have a motion to approve resolution 041321-17, the ongoing maintenance plan? I'll motion to approve the resolution 041321-17. Second. Second. Mr. Rodriguez. Roll call vote. Trustee Hernandez. Aye. Trustee Peinado? Aye. Trustee Rodriguez? Aye. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Garcia Reese? Aye. School Board Member Soto? Aye. School Board Member Araiza? Aye. School Board Member Montañez? Aye. That takes care of our resolutions for the night. We will now go to item number <clears throat> nine, action information item. Uh, Dr. Anvis? Uh, yes, so each year we go through an auditing process where all of our financial and 
and which also includes our attendance records where we go through an auditing process. And so we do an annual auditing process and the outside agency that does that, it's an independent auditor, um, Wilkinson, Hadley and King, uh, they are our auditors. Um, they, in years past, are do it all in person. And this year, they've done a lot of it virtually. We send them lots of documents. They go through all of our records and materials. This year, the audit was completed with no exceptions, meaning every single item was in order and meeting all of the legal requirements. So um, for that reason, and, and as usual, we bring this forward for the board's um, acceptance. Okay, do we have a motion to? Uh... I'll motion. Okay. Second. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We'll have now have the first reading of the proposed deletions of board policies, administrative regulations as listed. So Madam President and trustees, what we present to you in the packet out of our normal process is we present um, in a first reading, we provide information to the board for your review for changes in board policy. Um, and then we approve them at a second meeting later. Um, what we have presented in this packet are technical, uh, in technical modifications to board policy, many of them being deletions. And it's done, and these are really logistical pieces because of changes in the law. When, uh, so we didn't, so the, the changes of these are all little technical deletions along the way or additions based, based on education code and legal changes. So uh, we do have quite a few board policies coming forward in the coming months. Uh, that we have not updated because we have been extremely busy with the work around the pandemic and distance learning. And so we will do those and those will take a little more effort. That's where our staff is going through and analyzing and assessing those. And those are ones that are more typical. But again, most of them are based on updates to the law. So uh, on rare occasion, is it something that's subjective where the board has uh, a lot of, uh, where there's a lot of option involved. So these ones we present to you today really are technical deletions uh, based on uh, changes in the law. Thank you. Uh, do we have our, uh, is Mr. Duenas on for EXTA? There he Good. is. Uh, good afternoon, uh, board members and um, anyone else I can't see from my screen um, who's here tonight. Um, I just wanted to say that today was our first day of in-person learning. Um, I had, I was on campus, um, even though it's not my scheduled day, but my, my students need some help. So I was there and I was able to help students of teachers that weren't present as well. Um, pretty good day. Um, so the students that I was able to meet and um, they, they, I was able to, you know, at least relay the message that uh, that we're here to help. So um, I'm hopeful that uh, that the students got that message and that they continue to show up. Um, I did want to commend the district and the board members for the collaborative work that was put forth in the MOU that we uh, were able to agree to, as um, I think that uh, the approach that we're taking is a measured approach which is going to keep our community, our students, our staff and everyone involved um, as safe as possible as we um, still try to navigate through this pandemic. So I, I wanted to commend you all for, for the collaborative work that was put in um, creating this MOU agreement. And I just wanna remind you that um, we can get things done as we continue that spirit um, as we move forward towards our negotiations process for um, our new contract for this year. Um, so that's all I have for tonight. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I know Mr. Uh, Gutierrez is not here, but do we have a rep from, uh, from CSEA? I, I'm, I'm not sure. I just know Mr. Gutierrez said he would not be available. So I don't know if okay. he has someone coming. No, we don't see anyone on the call. In that case, uh, we're gonna uh, read your, we're gonna close the regular meeting. And we're gonna go back to closed session. We didn't get done. So thank you.
I don't know about that lawyer, too. <laughs> Well, thank you for being patient while we conducted some business in closed session. Uh, we finalized the... What? It was just feedback. I mean... We finalized the superintendent's evaluation this evening. And uh, that's my report out. Superintendent's evaluation was completed. Thank you, Dr. Anders. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Good night. Thank you. And Emma out. <laughs> what?